Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, if you will be the most blessed in this service, let your amen be taller than your neighbor. Lift your two hands and let's pray in tongues for the next 30 seconds. Let's, let's just pray in the Holy Ghost. Kotokola na mambre teke prafrakata na kato ele boja kele na mambre nde gago goglondo go profrete keba eh koporo sukele na ma ele boja krenenga ele bo kele na moha ele bobo bombre teke molo na mambo moronte kele na ma ele boja kele na mohodia. Praise you, Father. Koro to keba ba bo bo hodiaga. Ele ba ne ke poto kele ne ma ke mango kelega 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 kelega. Ah, koro to ke bo bo bombro te kele ne bo. Ege bo shakole ne bo bo hodia. We give you praise, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your glory and your grace that is all over this house. I ask that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted by any demonic or satanic force. I decree that whatever is not planted by God is rooted out. Sickness, disease, poverty, and lack terminated. And I give you praise that nobody lives here the same way they came. In Jesus' precious name. And everybody says amen like thunder. Amen. Give Jesus the biggest sound and the greatest shout in this place. Give him a praise. The risen Lord. The risen Lord. The risen Lord. Hallelujah. You can be seated in heavenly places. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a blessing. What a gift. We have in Pastor Paul and Pastor Ifan, the first lady of this house, such a great gift to the body of Christ. Thank you again. Thank you, Pastor Paul. Thank you, Pastor Ifan, for making yourselves available to be a platform through which the message of Jesus Christ is affecting the whole world. Thank you for your labor of love and thank you for all that you do for the kingdom. Help me celebrate them for being such a huge blessing to the body of Christ. Thank you again. You know, I say to people all, all over the world that the second greatest blessing God gave to the church after Jesus is a pastor. The Bible tells us that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That means when you have a shepherd, you are free from want. He says, I give you pastors according to my heart who shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass that when you are fed, you shall not lack, you shall not fear, you shall not be dismayed. So if you are in lack, in fear, and in dismay, it is because you have not taken advantage of the privilege to draw from the ministry of the pastor that God has planted in this house. And he says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. That means there could be dry pastures everywhere, but my shepherd knows how to navigate the path to where the pastures are green. See, that's why you've got to celebrate this great, great, great voice that God has raised for Nigeria and Africa to the world. Thank you again, Pastor Paul, for what you do. I'm here with my precious, lovely wife, my girlfriend of 24 years. <laughs> Help me celebrate her. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to salute also all the pastors and all the leadership of House on the Rock. You guys rock big time. Help me celebrate them again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the word of God? My goodness. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse number 15. I'm going to take up from there and then we go a million directions as the Holy Ghost will lead. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse number 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith 
which is in Christ Jesus. The next verse, 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. Why? That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And everybody says amen to the reading of God's word. Please, you may be seated. That from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. The word Holy Scriptures is a Greek word for hagios graphe. It means sacred writings or set apart writings. What Paul is telling Timothy is that the Scriptures are set apart or sacred for the purpose of making a man wise unto salvation the mission of the scriptures is to bring you to a place called salvation and then he says all scripture pasagraphe the entirety of the document called scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable so he gives us the borderlines that the scriptures are profitable number one for doctrine the word doctrine is the word learning Paul speaking says for the time shall come when they shall not take heed to sound doctrine but they will develop itching ears because they will not be willing to pay the price to settle down for sound doctrine and we live in some of those days today but we thank God that in this house you have sound doctrine can somebody shout a powerful amen so the scriptures are given for doctrine they are given for reproof the word reproof means evidence that the scripture forms the basis for our evidence they are also given for correction that as you grow in the knowledge of christ as you grow in grace you begin to see things the way you never saw them before and correction and adjustment is allowed because as you grow and learn you make adjustments according to the instructions of god's word and the scriptures are also profitable for instructions within the parameters of righteousness why that the man of god who is exposed to doctrine Dream, reproof correction and instructions in righteousness may be perfect matured thoroughly furnished unto all good works the bible tells us in john chapter 5 verse 39 jesus speaking said search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and they the scriptures are a testimony of me what jesus is saying is the scriptures don't give you eternal life the scriptures give evidence or a testimony to my person in verse 40 he said to them and i know that you will not come to me that you might have life i give life not the scriptures but the scriptures are my testimony but after you read the scriptures you must locate me if you want life i give life not the scriptures in luke chapter 24 verse 25 on the way to emmaus he met two gentlemen after resurrection and he said to them gentlemen what are you talking about they looked at jesus and said are you a stranger are you not aware of jesus they were rebuking jesus and didn't know it was jesus so you can be in church all your life and may have never known jesus you can know the songs you can know the clap you can know the dance but never know jesus and ladies and gentlemen until you know jesus you cannot know yourself because it is the unveiling of christ that reveals the identity of the believer when you see him in him you see you and what you see in him is a reflection of what he has done in you in his death burial and resurrection so he says to them oh fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken what have the prophets spoken ought not christ to have suffered these things and to have entered into his glory and beginning at moses he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself he did not expound all the scriptures to them he expounded the things that concern himself because he is the message of the scriptures so in verse 44 he said these are the words i spoke to 
you while I was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses what Jesus is saying is I am the message of the law of Moses when you look at the law of Moses or you look at the dispensation of Moses Moses was functioning with types and shadows functioning with promises and prophecies there was no reality to the operation of Moses now just before I begin to deal with Moses we have established that Genesis to Malachi is the Old Testament or the mystery or the rev or, 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 or Jesus concealed or types shadows promises and prophecies we have also established that Matthew Mark Luke and John are historical books recording the humanity of Christ and then we have said Acts to Revelation is the New Testament we have also established that the Old Testament is not a complement of the New Testament the New Testament is a replacement of the Old Testament the Bible in Hebrews tells us that God finding fault with the Old Testament said I will abolish it and give you a New Testament so the New Testament is a replacement of the Old Testament the Old Testament is a testament that was powered by the blood of animals which didn't have power to take away sin but could only cover the sin for one year and at the end of one year if the high priest cannot offer an acceptable sacrifice the sins of Israel we are not covered but this man Jesus the one who sponsors the New Testament once and for all entered in paid the price eternally and has obtained for us eternal salvation so the New Testament is powered by the blood of Jesus the Old Testament powered by the blood of bulls and goats the New Testament is eternal the Old Testament is temporal the Old Testament is shadow the New Testament is the substance is the reality of the drama or the figures of the Old Testament now Jesus speaking said in John chapter 1 verse 18 no man had seen God at any time I began to speak about that yesterday and I'm going to take it to the next level no man had seen God at any time so Moses never saw God Adam never saw God Elijah never saw God why because Jesus said so first John chapter 4 verse 12 put it up for me first John chapter 4 verse 12 thank you multimedia guys first John chapter 4 verse 12 no man had seen God at any time Jesus said it John is repeating what Jesus said no man had seen God at any time and somebody said to me but Moses on Mount Sinai saw God no Moses never saw God on Mount Sinai so who spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai Hebrews 2 2 put it up for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward verse 3 how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation the Old Testament angels the New Testament Christ who spoke to Moses angel how do we know that Galatians 319 put it up God punished the devil Galatians 319 we are for then served the law it was added that the law was an addendum the law was not the plan of God for man man never planned for you to keep laws because God wants relationship I and my children don't have laws we function in relationship am I teaching here that's why after the fall of Adam we see God talking to Adam God is not angry God is looking for how to help Adam it is Adam that messed up it is God that is looking for Adam 
Adam is running away. God is chasing Adam. Adam, Adam. That's the heart of a loving father. He walks to Adam. He pulls him out of the bush. He takes away the leaves and gives him covenant clothing. I don't know if I'm communicating here. All through life, man kept running from God and God kept chasing after man. Look at the first murder in the Bible. Cain kills Abel. And God comes to Cain. Cain, where is Abel? He said, a man and a brother's keeper. That doesn't look like a distant relationship. Cain and God were not having a distant relationship. Because for Cain to look at God in the eye and lie means there was no distant relationship. And God looked at Cain and said, a fugitive and a vagabond, you will be. Cain said, oh, my punishment is too much. God took a stone, put a mark on Cain and said, anybody that touch him, I will deal with you. How can God be protecting a murderer? But ladies and gentlemen, it's the grace of God that bringeth salvation that has appeared unto all men. Lift your hand and shout I hear you now follow me carefully so the law was not part of God's plan for man God kept chasing after man in Egypt they murmured he gave them water they are hungry he gives them manna they are messing up and speaking things against God. He is blessing them with the pillar of cloud by day, pillar of fire by night. Why fire by night? In the desert, at night is cold. So he gave them heater. In the day is hot. He gave them air conditioner. That's a loving father. Then in Exodus 19, man looked at God and said, enough is enough. We don't want your supplies. We want to earn whatever we get. We want to start producing for ourselves. And God said, Moses, did they say they don't want me to meet their needs? Moses said, that's what they said. God said, okay, from now, distant. Nobody should come to the mountain. If they come to the mountain, they will die. Distance has started. God wanted relationship. That's why it says the law was added because of transgression. Whose transgression? The transgression of Abraham abraham was the originator of the law it was not moses how did abraham originate the law god said to abraham i will give you a seed and abraham said i can't wait abraham produced ishmael and ishmael is the origin of the law galatians chapter 4 two covenants one from mount sinai and one in jerusalem mount sinai answers to jerusalem the law answers to grace which is an allegory but it speaks of two covenants he's talking about works and he's talking about grace isaac was grace old age sarah had clocked menopause no hope for her bam they had a child ishmael was works Abraham went out of his way, picked his house girl, and was struggling to make the promise come to pass. And he messed up the plan. And out of Abraham came law. And out of Abraham came grace. From the same house. So that's why when Paul was talking in the book of Romans, he said it was an addendum. It was not the original plan. So Abraham functioned under grace. All of them before Exodus 19 enjoyed the grace of God. That is why when Moses gave them the law, he gave them the law. Then he himself, he said, oh God, if I have found favor in your sight, show me the way. He gave them law and enjoyed grace. As your amen will be taller than your neighbor, receive grace. Receive grace receive grace somebody shout grace grace follow me carefully put it back galatians 3 19 it was added because of transgressions i want you to see it till the seed should come to whom the promise was made and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator so an angel was the one administering the old testament and in the hands of a mediator called moses so who gave moses the ten commandments angel 
How do we know that? Acts 7.35 Put it up Acts 7.35 God punished the devil Are you ready for this? This Moses Whom they refused saying Who made thee a ruler and a judge The same did God send to be a ruler And a deliverer By the hand of the angel Which appeared to him in the bush Who did Moses meet in the burning bush? An angel Moses never saw God Moses never met God God was interacting with them Through angels He couldn't reach them one on one Because there was no mediator Am I talking to somebody here? Put it up, put it up Acts chapter 7 verse 50 Let me show you something else Kabota, kabota Acts seven fifty. Had not my hand made all things 51 you stiff naked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. So do ye. Next verse. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one. Of whom you have been now the betrayers and murderers. Next verse. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. Who gave Moses the ten commandments? Angels. If I'm teaching, shout I hear. I hear. So when Jesus now said, No man has seen God, Jesus knew what he was talking about. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Pastor Paul, do you know that Jesus looked at the Jews in John chapter 6? He said, Look at you guys. You think your fathers ate manna? You think your fathers ate manna from heaven? He said, Your fathers never ate manna from heaven. He said that thing you call manna from heaven didn't come from heaven. That manna didn't come from heaven. It was just around the atmosphere that that manna came. Then Jesus said to them, I am that manna that came from heaven. He said, your fathers ate that manna and they died. He said, but this is the bread that a man will eat and not die. Except you eat my flesh and drink my blood. You have no life. Shout, I hear, I hear. Jesus, he said, no manna came from heaven. From creation till Jesus came, nobody came from heaven. So that's why Jesus was emphatically saying, no man has seen God at any time. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten of the Father, he has declared him. Jesus is God. In Colossians, Paul calls him the image of the invisible God. That's the name of Jesus, the image of the invisible God. The writer of Hebrews calls Jesus the express image of the Father. You know why? God thought, well, if I continue to be God where I am, man will never know me. So I have to give myself an image that man can identify with. So God came as man. Jesus is not a junior God. Jesus is God. Outside Jesus, there is no God. There is no God anywhere. Jesus is God. Outside Jesus, there is no God. Okay, let's begin from prophecy. His name shall be called, help me, wonderful, counselor, eh? Eh? who is mighty God, ever. Who is everlasting father? Jesus is God. Put up for me John chapter 14, verse number 7. John 14, 7. John 14, 7. If you had known me, you should have known my father also. If 
you know me, you know my father. And from hence forth, you know him. And I've seen him. That means looking at me, you're seeing the father. Outside me, there's no father anywhere. Follow this. Next verse. Next verse, verse 8. Oh, Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the father. And it sufficed us. Philip was saying, look, Jesus, this you're explaining, we don't understand. Let me ask you again, in case you don't understand my question. We are not wanting to see you. We want to see the father. Your father, Jesus. We know you're Jesus. But we are saying, show us, Papa, who is your father? Hegemosh. Jesus answered Philip, have I been so long time with you? And yet, has thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Jesus is saying, Philip, I am the only Father you will ever see. There is no Father outside me. I am the Father. I am the Father. Listen. The concept of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost is a concept of redemption. Yes, it's a concept of redemption. For him to save you, he had to come as the Son of God. He's still the same God. He's still the same God. He is the pleroma. That's the Greek word. The pleroma. That is, he is the corporate headquarters of the Godhead bodily. That is when Jesus moves all of God's headquarters. Everything that makes God, God is moving. Jesus is the corporate headquarters of the Godhead bodily. Are you, are you understanding? It has pleased God that in him should all fullness dwell. And you are complete in him who is the head of all principalities and powers. Somebody shout, I hear you. Let me stretch your minds a little bit because so many of us are believing that one day we will go to heaven when we get to heaven there will be mansions pastor paul i've even had some pastors preach that there are some people's mansions that are at window level some people are still at foundation some people they have started roofing but because they are not praying well the roofing sheets from dangote has not arrived there are all kinds of all kinds of philosophies going on that have no scriptural backing i don't know if i'm talking to somebody so all of you are thinking when we go to heaven you know your house will be there my house will be there and your house will be there there are no such houses there are no such houses so let's get into it john chapter 14 which is a scripture many people use john chapter 14 verse 1 let not your heart be troubled you believe in god believe also in me next verse in my father's house are many mansions hold hold have as intelligent and educated as you are have you ever seen mansions in a house Have you ever seen mansions in a house? He didn't say my father's houses. He said in my father's one house. There are many. That means the mansions he's talking about is not what you are thinking. So what was he talking about? The word mansions is the word dwelling places. And it's not a futuristic teaching. This is a past event. It's not one day there are mansions in my father's house. That's not what I was talking about. Remember, this was before the cross. So what Jesus was saying is, I will soon die. When I die, I will rise. When I rise, I will raise all those that believe in me. That where I am seated, they will be seated. Actually, dwelling places means the right hand of authority. It means placement what jesus was saying is when i rise from the dead i will occupy a place of authority and when you believe in me you will sit with me there so that where i am you will be so when you got born again he raised you up together with him to be seated where 
in heavenly places far above principalities and powers so right now you are sitting in your mansion right now you're sitting in your mansion so somebody says so where will we live in heaven pastor paul you know what god told me god told me you are so holy that the most holy lives inside you he said you are so holy that the most holy lives inside you yeah he lives in he said i will live in you i will walk in you you are my house your body is the temple of the holy ghost you are bought with a price therefore glorify god in your spirit and in your body which are god's so the most holy lives inside you stop letting people mentally abuse you and tell you who you are not and who you are look for yourself in christ and see who you truly are now when we say the word holiness it has been bastardized many people think holiness is sinlessness that's not correct so there's this ideology going on in the body of christ which is actually a fallacy it's an ideology of sinless perfection now there is no such thing as sinless perfection there's only perfection in christ there's no sinless perfection so you are made to be struggling okay i won't tell a lie again i won't tell a lie i won't do bad things so you're in a straight jacket you're trying you're trying then you ask yourself for how long will i continue like this for how long will i continue like this then you fall you stand up oh i'm not sure we'll make heaven oh may we make heaven jesus heaven at last that mentality has messed you up but jesus said my yoke is easy my body is light who am i talking to in this place paul speaking said jesus is made unto us righteousness holiness so holiness is not what you do holiness is a person jesus is holiness when he came on your inside you became holy what's the meaning of holiness set apart set apart and you are set apart he calls you royal priesthood holy nation peculiar people a chosen generation called out of where darkness into where his marvelous light so your salvation made you holy hi yeah, yeah, yeah. somebody say you don't know me i know you it's not that you don't know you let me give you a scripture hebrews chapter 3 verse 1 and i want everybody to read with me hebrews chapter 3 verse number 1 Let's read like a mass choir. Everybody want to go. What did he call you? Who are you? Are you holy? How holy are you? Are you holy? How holy are you? Are you righteous? How righteous are you? As righteous as Jesus, as holy as Jesus, bone of his bones, flesh of his flesh. He cannot be sick, I cannot be sick. He cannot be poor, I cannot be poor. How? When Jesus died, he died the death of a criminal. He didn't die for himself he had no problem he didn't need to die for himself but you were condemned to die for the wages of sin is death listen the wages of sin is not confession sin is a legal subject that is dealt with in the court of divine justice when you sin your judgment is death it's not i'm sorry there's no court of jurisdiction where the guy that is condemned by his crying his case has been reviewed so that your crying doesn't mean it changes anything it only helps your emotions it helps you feel good but it does not affect the core the case in question the wages of sin is death so somebody who sins has to die all have sinned 
all must die god said no i don't want them to die somebody has to pay the price and nobody among them qualifies so god said i will punish their judgment on myself so jesus came took all our sins on the cross he was wounded for our transgressions bruised for our iniquity the chastisement of our peace was upon him by his stripe we so on that cross when he took our sins god turned his back jesus cried out eloi eloi lama sabathani my god my god why has thou forsaken me god turned his back the greatest the dreadful thing that jesus dreaded was that separation the sin of man separated man from god so for jesus to reconcile man he had to be separated that separation is not extinction is spiritual death because you two were not extinct you only died spiritually that's why paul said in ephesians chapter 2 we that we are dead in sins and trespasses who still walked we were walking but we were dead we were driving but we were dead we were eating but we were dead in sins and trespasses so jesus too had to be separated the separation of jesus from the father is spiritual death he died spiritually then he gave up the ghost he was buried now you know sometimes preachers tell you that when jesus died and went to hell there was a drama in hell jesus told the devil devil hold on let me teach you a lesson i'm going to show you now there was no such thing no such thing when jesus died he went to hell hell there is called hades hades is not a place of fire it's a place of darkness where the dead go to and satan was not there satan was in there there was no such physical conflict between jesus and satan because satan has not gone to hell yet demons have not gone to hell yet you can't send them to hell now hell is reserved it's reserved for satan and his demons they are not there they are still here going to and fro carrying out their activity that's why when jesus appeared somewhere the demon said to him we know who you are the son of god have you come to destroy us before our time we know our time we know our time we are supposed to still be here so when jesus went to hell who did he meet in hell nobody it's called abyss or shoel or the place of the dark remember on his way the, the thief on the cross said when you go to paradise remember me he said today you will be with me where in paradise paradise by the story jesus told us was in the underworld so when jesus was going to abyss the place of the dead he passed by paradise when he got to paradise he deposited that guy in paradise we are abraham isaac jacob isaiah jeremiah all of them were in paradise in the underworld none of them went to heaven because there was no mediator so when jesus got to paradise he dropped the thief and proceeded into abyss when he got there he was there that separation was the death was a painful moment three days he was there what happened he was there quoting scriptures thou shall not leave my soul in hell thou shall not allow thy holy one see corruption he was quoting he was quoting he was quoting he was quoting the scriptures and on the third day the scriptures quickened him when the scriptures quickened him he rose now listen nobody killed jesus and nobody rose him up before he died he said i lay down my life by myself and i pick my life up so he died by himself and on the third day he rose by himself i feel like i'm preaching here oh somebody shout i hear when he rose he went to paradise 
when he entered paradise he lined them up abraham isaac jacob all the prophets he looked at them and began to give them eternal life and all of them had eternal life then together with him they came out and stood on the ground now listen carefully jesus didn't run away he was not an escapee when he came out he went back to the tomb where they laid him he went and entered his body carried his body folded their napkin kept their napkin and walked out of that domain the devil is a liar lift your hand shout yes yes sir listen he left without rolling the stone away he walked through the stone entered there wore his body came out through the stone kabota kabota i said kabota kabota when he came out the old testament saints abraham with eternal life because before they know eternal life but when he rose he gave to them because they believed in him in a promissory note now that he has risen he cashed their promises and fulfilled their promises and they entered jerusalem and they appeared to their great grandchildren and say hi hi great grandchild this is great grandpa on my way to heaven i will see you someday and mary came to touch him he said touch me not i've not yet gone to my father revelation who will soon be your father my god who will soon be your god tell my brethren i have risen and on that day jesus stood and started going to heaven he didn't disappear no he was going he was ascending he that ascended he was ascending like a lift till he went when he got to heaven because god is not in heaven he passed how do we know i'll show you wait wait i will show you just wait listen carefully when he got to heaven pastor paul when he got to heaven he had to wash heaven because heaven was dirty hebrews chapter 9 tells us that he washed heaven how was heaven dirty the fall of adam corrupted heaven because heaven and earth is for man so when adam sinned the sin of adam corrupted the earth and the heaven so when jesus rose he went to heaven first washed the atmosphere then he passed heaven to where god is how do we know that ephesians chapter 4 verse 7 put it up god punished the devil <laughs> ephesians chapter 4 verse 7 but unto every one of us is giving grace according to the measure of the gift of christ next verse wherefore he saith when he ascended up on high he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men next verse now that he ascended what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth next verse he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above he didn't go to heaven god is not in heaven so he went above all heavens to where god is to offer the sacrifice when the father accepted the sacrifice then the father said sit on my right hand the right hand was the throne in heaven the place of authority then jesus came out from where the immortality that dwelleth in unapproachable light dwells he came back into heaven and filled everything and then when you believe in him he gives you life raises you up to be seated with him things changed somebody shout i hear you watch this they were in a room without a window and a door jesus walked in He was walking through things because because when eternity invades time matter don't matter you didn't hear what i said when eternity invades time matter don't matter that's why jesus could walk through doors and through windows and, and listen to me one of these is all of us will walk through doors and windows walls will no more exist i don't know who i'm talking to here listen when he entered the room they said he's a spirit he said handle me 
handle me. A spirit does not have bone and flesh. He didn't say bone and blood. He said bone and flesh. Where is the blood? Emptied. So the immortal body is a composition of flesh and bones. As you see me have. Why did he have bones? Because he was not a jelly. He had structure. After he wore the immortal body, he could walk with structure. You see his bones, you see his shape. He said, touch me. They say, you're still a spirit. He said, do you have fish? Give me to eat. They gave him, he ate. They say, he's still a spirit. He did, Poof. their eyes opened. And they knew him. What was that? It was a prototype of what is going to happen to all of us. One of these mornings, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound from the eastern sky. Follow me carefully as I'm closing. Are you, are you blessed? Are you blessed? The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1. Watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1. Put it up for me, brother. 2 Corinthians 5 1. Oh my goodness. Now, this 5 1 second corinthians chapter 5 1 2 3 4 5 verse 1 second corinthians 5 1 somebody shout i hear second corinthians oh those guys are doing a very good job second corinthians chapter 5 verse 1 for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle we are dissolved we have a building it's already a complete building god is not building a house he has finished it we have a building of god and a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens next verse next verse verse 2 for in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon so that mansion in heaven is a cloth it's not a house it's a cloth it's something you will wear it's a cloth to be clothed upon with our house so that house is a cloth which is from heaven so the house is already there it's not your prayer that will complete it the death of christ completed it it's called grace what is it called if your own is louder receive double of it put it back because i'm going somewhere we desire to be clothed with that house in heaven if so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked for we that are in this tabernacle so he calls this tabernacle do groan being burdened not for that we will be unclothed but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life so this is what paul is saying when the trumpet of god sounds because some of you are afraid that you will miss the rapture you will not miss the rapture it's not a prayer point and i'm not saying it for you to say amen the amen was already said in christ all the promises of god are in him yes amen where are you in him where are the promises in him it's a done deal i said it's a done deal i said it's a done deal so what happens when that trumpet will sound it's not your ear that will hear the sound that eternal life that got in you when you got born again when that trumpet sounds that life will move as the life moves to go your body will change when this body changes you wear the other one when you wear the other one you take off now you can imagine what will happen all of us will assemble in the sky 
the dead in Christ and those of us that are alive. We shall meet. There will be a commotion in the sky. We will be running around. Hey, you made it. Brother, bless you. Good to see you. Go. We will know each other because we will not be jealous. We will still be looking formed. I will still recognize Pastor Paul. I will recognize Pastor F. I will recognize you. And in the sky, there will be commotion. Oh my goodness. All our hair will come back. <laughs> Those that are blind, their eyes will open. Cripples will walk in the glory. People that are deaf, their ears will open. There will be perfection. Perfection. If you are short, you will be perfectly short. If you are tall, you will be perfectly tall. The devil is a liar. I came to declare to somebody, as your amen will come like thunder, the devil has lost the battle on your case. The devil has lost the battle on your case. He has lost the battle in your family. He has lost the battle in your career. He has lost the battle in your business. If your amen is louder than your neighbors, I release grace upon your life. From this service, I speak into your destiny. Where there was defeat before, the defeat is cancelled. The defeat is cancelled. What you have used your hand to do that has not produced for you. As your amen will come like thunder, the grace for maximum productivity, receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it in your family. Receive it in your career. Receive it in your marriage. Receive it in your profession. What your father couldn't do for 10 years in the next seven days in the next one month in the next three months break your father's record break your mother's record break barriers possess territories open new frontiers the devil is a liar lift your hand shout yes Within the next 24 hours, as this conference finishes today, you will drive a car you didn't buy. You will own a house you didn't build. Do they pay you to shout amen? I said you will spend money you didn't work for. You will spend money you didn't work for. Ah, people that overtook you, God there before you I prophesy the next time they lift their head you will be ahead of them overtake your overtakers overtake your overtakers they went ahead of you you will arrive before them they started building before you you will finish before them receive the grace of acceleration the grace of acceleration the grace of acceleration business you are about to start favor is giving you the capital receive capital by favor receive capital by favor receive capital by favor supernatural favor they don't like your face but they cannot deny you they don't like your look but they cannot say no to you I say favor is falling on you like rain Favor like rain, favor like rain, favor like rain. You will graduate from that school. You will graduate from that school. The devil is a liar. They call you barren. Nine months from now, you will deliver your set of twins. I command your womb be opened. I command your womb be opened. I command your womb be opened. set before you an open door no man can shut that door every door god has opened for you any man that was trying to shut it is removed from the way i prophesy to the first two thousand of you enter your new door enter your new door enter your new door enter your new door your new door receive your promotion receive your appointment the letter is released the check is released favor like rain favor like rain 
I command cancer, ulcer, air condition, heart condition, be healed right now. I cause every every bleeding condition, HIV and AIDS, sugar, diabetes, gonorrhea, syphilis, whatever is messing up with your body, I flush it out of your body. I flush it out of your body. I flush it out of your body from your head to your legs receive a miracle your body is restored your organs are restored your bones are restored your brain is restored your hands are restored your skin is restored your destiny is restored from this day by the Lord God who is I am I join faith with Pastor Paul and Pastor Ifa in this house and all the corporate anointings in this building. I speak into your life. Your day of marking time in the same spot ends now. Move to your next level. Move, 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 move. I say move. I say move to your next level your new face begin your new journey somebody's not shouting amen like thunder that phone call you've been waiting for has just been released lift your two hands and speak in tongues like a man drunk just blast 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 don't pray with apology let the God in you rise let the Jesus in you manifest the Holy Ghost. Eka bado ka ba ba ba. Brian akoke. Eka bo. Eka bo. Hey, hey. Build up your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Rise up like an edifice. Something is shifting. Something is breaking. Something is shifting. Something is breaking. Something is shifting. Hey! Pray, 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 pray. Oh, oh. a little more pray in the holy ghost show talaba show talaba show talaba show talaba show talaba in the name of jesus lift your two hands those of you that have been under pressure all kinds of pressure you can't sleep well you're restless things are all over fighting you from every direction as your amen will come like thunder receive rest receive rest receive rest receive rest receive rest receive rest in the name of Jesus. It is done. 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 Thank you, Lord. Now listen, if you believe it, for another 30 seconds, do something crazy. You can clap, you can jump, you can shout, you can run. Can run hey! something crazy, something crazy. Go ahead, shut up, celebrate. Doors are opening, doors are opening, barriers are breaking, doors are opening, barriers are breaking, obstacles are broken. Celebrate. Celebrate! 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 Woo! Woo! Give him praise! Somebody 
shout it is done 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 throughout this week every day will be celebration in your house you didn't hear me do you have your dancing shoes throughout this week throughout this week every day in your office in your house in your business it will be celebration praise you my father praise you my father listen to me carefully I'm going to take up an offering from you. How many of you believe? You believe what you heard. Say, I believe. I, believe. I have entered. I have rest. rest. See, rest is not an event. Rest is a person. Rest is Jesus. Once Jesus enters your heart, rest has entered. He said, come unto me, I will give you. That was before he died. After he died and rose, he is our rest. Yes, he is our rest. The moment you enter Christ, you have entered rest. Listen carefully. The whole of this week, those of you that have been struggling every night to sleep, you'll be sleeping like a baby through the week. And for the rest of your life. I didn't hear that amen, somebody. And those of you in the overflow, out there, all of you thousands in the overflow those of you watching on the internet and those of you hooking up all over the world as your amens are coming like thunder from wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice i join faith with pastor paul whatever was crooked in your life i command you to be straight every valley be lifted up mountains be brought down from this day wherever you're watching the broadcast somebody with a heart condition has just been healed somebody with a bone disease has just been healed ah, liver disease has just been healed hey! i declare right now favor upon you wherever you're watching the broadcast in the name of jesus it is done can i hear your amen I want to take up an offering from you you want to say man of god i believe god sent you to me this weekend i want to just thank god for what grace has done in my life within this conference i'm going to plant a seed of a hundred thousand fifty thousand twenty four thousand i mean twenty five thousand ten thousand five thousand now all over the building i'm going to give you that opportunity but i want to pray for you right now before you begin to package your seed you know depending on what the lord has laid in your heart but i've mentioned certain figures but you can go beyond because you know the dealings of god with your heart i'd like you to lift your hands up father everywhere in this building as your people respond to the nudgings of the holy ghost to respond to this conference with a seed and offering all over the building over the internet around the world wherever people are watching into this service jesus you are the offering that pleases the father so we put these offerings in your hands and that you present it before the father right now and i declare for everybody every need is met every desire is granted Every expectation manifests now. Amen. It is done. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please, you can grab that offering, write your check out in the name of this ministry. But just obey the Holy Ghost right now. And then we will give joyfully and celebration in our hearts and voices. We will raise it up to Jesus. An offering acceptable, which is pleasant unto God. So grab that seed, grab that offering, make it as qualitative as possible, you know, depending on the revelation of Jesus in your heart. You know, Pastor Paul, I say this all the time. When people see Jesus, money loses value. When Jesus got on that donkey to Jerusalem, when people saw Jesus, they, they put everything down. You can't see Jesus and still be thinking money. When you see Jesus, money loses value. I'd like you to bring out the best of your seed. If you are making a check, make it out in the name of this ministry. And together we will, with celebration and with joy, offer to Jesus our seed this morning. And celebrate him for what he has done 
in his death his burial and his resurrection which has paid for our sins past present and future and has accepted us in the beloved and secured for us a place right in the heart of the father once you put your seat together i'd like you to stand on your feet i like you to stand on your feet thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus are you excited lift it up and just thank jesus for receiving it just thank jesus for receiving it and we will be instructed as to how to give thank you lord